Hi, I'm Jamie McGregor. I'm here at the Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine, which is meeting for its annual meeting in Dallas. It's February 1st. I'm here with Dr. Mikhail Elowitz, who's from the University of Pennsylvania, who's one of the world leaders in looking at inflammation and the mechanisms having to do with part tuition, both at term and preterm. Uh, Mikhail, can you tell us a little bit about your research and uh, how do you think things are going in this field? So I think there's been a lot of advances in the last few years. We know that there's been a growing body of evidence looking at inflammation in preterm birth, but really understanding the precise mechanisms has really been lacking. So our research program involves both basic and translational research using a mouse model of preterm birth, really trying to understand the immune response in normal pregnancy and the immune response in abnormal pregnancy. Okay, you've been one of the leaders in looking at how progesterone may modulate multiple uh, parts of inflammation and also the, the, the processes of, uh, uh, of the biology of part tuition. How are we doing with progesterone in understanding its specific roles? Well, I think there's been, because there's been such a lack of funding in women's health research, we really have a limited knowledge on some pregnancy adverse pregnant outcomes such as preterm birth. So progesterone, as you know, was used in clinical trials and been shown to be effective. However, we don't really understand the mechanism, and the problem with that is we may not actually be giving it to the patients who most may most benefit from it. And so what we've found out is that progesterone actually may target as the primary event cervical changes and cervical ripening in preventing preterm birth. Do you think that they act independently on the cervix and the uterus, or is it a, a combination of effects? I don't think we have enough data yet. I think the, the data to date suggests that the effect of progesterone on the myometra may not be as great as we initially thought, and really the cervix may be the more targeted organ, if you will. So you're suggesting that the progesterone actually uh, decreases the uh, preparation of the cervix going into both labor and preterm labor? I'm not sure what it does at term labor. I think that's a very big question. I think progesterone in the preterm, in a select group of preterm labor patients, it won't work on all, changes the integrity or preserves the integrity of the uterus or changes the immune response so that, that subgroup of patients are not susceptible to inflammation. I think we would say that there's a new, the new standard would be for people who've had a prior preterm birth to give progesterone as ACOG has suggested. Are there any adverse effects from giving progesterone? So the problem with that is a lot of the data in looking at adverse effect take 10 to 20 years. The perfect example in the obstetrical world is diethylstilbestrol, which we didn't find out about an adverse effect for 10 to 20 years. The data to date, though, would suggest that all progestational agents are probably fairly safe in pregnancy. We don't have really anything to tell us about teratogenicity or adverse long-term effects, though with the caveat must be said is we don't have the longer than two-year follow-up yet on this cohort of women receiving the drug. And indeed, we're talking about progesterone, which is made by the placenta and the corpus luteum. So we really want to thank you for your leading uh, work in this whole area. You've really led the way in terms of all of our understanding of what's going on. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.